Joining us tonight, former strategist to President Trump, Fox News national security strategist, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Good to have you with us, Seb. Let's, uh, let's start with what we've been discussing all day, the attacks on the president by the fired FBI director, which seemed to lead only to conclusions about his petulance uh, uh, and his uh, sort of perpetual tirade that has been set off. I worked for the president. I'm still in touch with the president, so call me biased if you will. But that interview was truly dastardly, Lou. Uh, I don't care who you are uh, to cast aspersions on another on the quality of another man's marriage is reprehensible, let alone from a former director of the FBI. And then to say truly underhand things like, well, George, um, I don't know, he may be a pawn of the Russians or compromised mm. by Moscow. Well, Lou, I don't know, but, but maybe James Comey is compromised by mm. the m drug cartels in Mexico, or maybe, maybe he's a sleeper agent for mm. the North Koreans. I really don't know, Lou. It's, it's all possible, as he uh, said. Uh, he could have also said the same thing of President Obama. It's possible that he yes. was an agent of Russia, that they had something on him, as the, the question was styled. Uh, Comey persists in this and then says it's not normal. Uh, a man who has lied and leaked declares it's not normal for the president to raise the issue of jail time for his offenses against the law. Well, look at what has happened with regards to people like General Flynn, who have had to sell their house for committing lesser crimes than what James Comey did in terms of mm -hmm. actually admitting in front of Congress that he took classified presidential meeting notes and leaked them to the press. With, with what end? To create a special prosecutor to prosecute the man who just fired him. This is a man who's lied on record. This is a man who exonerated Hillary Clinton before the investigation had even interviewed the suspect. So I, I can't remember in U.S. history. I think J. Edgar Hoover did less damage to the FBI than James Comey's doing right now. Yeah, I, I think there is. A, I think it has all of the appearance of exactly that. Uh, the, the Comey memos. Uh, Congress, again, at least the three chairmen, uh, Nunes uh, and uh, uh, Goodlot and uh, Gowdy, giving Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, another day or two, midweek, whatever that means, to deliver the Comey memos uh, to Congress. A and uh, again, stonewalling uh, with, a, with a smirk on his face. Uh, Ron Rosenstein. The only question is, where is the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions? Why isn't he making these decisions? Why isn't he talking about uh, those memos? And it's in his responsibility to uh, uh, submit to the oversight of Congress constitutionally. What in the world is going on? Not only that, Lou, also the director of the FBI. Director Ray is, is missing in action, so I, I'm not going to sit here and, and make excuses for the AG, but what about Director Ray? This is his agency. He's the new director. He could release those instantly, and my friends inside the agency tell me he is hiding in his office, Lou. So that raises the question. Why doesn't the president order his attorney general to release those to Congress, those members. Well, I, I've, um, I won't go into details, but in the meetings I've had with the president since I, I left his employ, uh, he has demonstrated to me a, a very laudable hands-off approach to that whole department, trying to at least give the appearance of not being involved in the day-to-day -day running of things as he should not be. So I doff my cap to the well, president for well, keeping arm, arm's reach. I, you know, I understand that as you doff your hat, and we all salute the president, but the reality here is that it is his responsibility that the Department of Justice is not an independent institution. Correct. Neither Correct. is the FBI an independent agency. They are elements of the executive branch which report to the president of the United States, and in a matter as grave as a collision between two co-equal branches of government, the executive and the legislature, the president should have his voice heard by those who serve at his pleasure.
Oh, I, I agree that he has every right to do so, but he also knows the political cost that would entail mm -hmm. if he was visible in his demands towards the AG and to the director of the FBI. But again, uh, it's also Congress is, you know, Congress has, has not really exercised oversight for decades. And it's a few people, mm -hmm. it's Goodlatte, it's Nunes, who are finally exercising that oversight as they should have done for decades on the Hill. Yeah. I, I think truly it's only Nunes. Uh, Goodlot is a late, uh, if you will, a late comer to this, uh, to the issue, and he is also an early uh, exeter uh, from this uh, Congress uh, retiring. Uh, it is without Devin Nunes and solely Devin Nunes amongst those uh, three: Goodlot, uh, Gowdy, and Nunes. Uh, it is truly to Nunes that we owe great, uh, a great uh, debt uh, for continuing to search for the truth and serving uh, the Constitution by insisting on oversight. No one the, else has had that, those guts. Lou, the Republic, o, the Republic owes a great debt to Devin Nunes. That, that goes without saying. You're absolutely right. And as we look at what is moving here, uh, talks with the North Koreans at the highest levels, as the president put it, uh, we have seen uh, President Xi uh, defer, at least seem to defer, uh, publicly, as uh, Kim Jong Un uh, is uh, talking about sitting down with the president and having serious discussions at a summit, uh, the president's actions in Syria. This president is manifestly in charge of foreign policy, uh, and the caterwauling that we once heard has at least ebbed to just slight sniffles of despair on the part of the left. Yes, it, it, it's, um, you know the president as well as anybody, it, he's an unstoppable steam locomotive and what he's done already in Asia, in Europe, uh, with regards to ISIS, with regards to all our old alliances, with regards to Israel, it's truly remarkable given the cacophony of insanity in the domestic, political and media scene, uh, it's truly quite amazing. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, always good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Lou.